Hello friends and welcome back to Autumn Cottage. I'm back in the garden now but I've spent this afternoon out on an awfully big adventure. I've made my first foray out to meet a friend socially for the first time in eight weeks. Uh, just a short visit, we just had a picnic lunch in the churchyard in Hungerford. Um, so we were very careful to be socially distanced from each other but oh my goodness it was lovely to just see familiar face again. I did capture a little bit of film footage there so I'll share that with you later but I'm going to show you around the garden a little for the moment because there have been a few changes here. I haven't checked in with you for a fortnight. I haven't been idle. I've been working very hard in the garden particularly around the pond and look there's the evidence so let me show you exactly what I've been up to I can't remember if I showed you the beginning of this little pathway in the last video but made a bit more progress I've actually got the bark chippings down now it leads up into the wilder part of the garden and I've edged it with some of the old saplings that had to be taken down with a front edging of old brick so that uh, Alec can mow up against it. The little bed that I've made in the place where one of the bigger saplings came down I've planted up with just a few plants that I've had around the house actually. There's an old bamboo a few hostas and I've put quite a lot of English bluebells in but although it looks reasonably neat and tidy I have to tell you that it was a particularly horrible bit of ground to plant because only a couple of inches beneath the surface were some very large roots coming from the number of trees that are around here so it's been a case of making planting holes where I could and building up the soil where I couldn't. I shall be adding to the planting. I've got lots of snowdrops to go in and this bank is going to be covered with primroses. You can see a tray of primroses which I transplanted from the front drive. They'd all seeded themselves in the cracks in the paving stones coming down to the door. So I thought I'd make good use of those and bring them down to the wooded area. I've also got a rather nice Brunnera Jack Frost here. It's got these very tiny little forget-me-not blue flowers but the most attractive part of it is actually the colouring of the leaves. They disappear completely in the winter but in the summer they look really lovely. In the shadier parts of the garden. You remember that we had this fence installed a couple of months ago so my project now for the rest of the summer is to plant up along the base of it. Not always easy because the soil is very hard. Lots of lumps of clay which were unfortunately dumped there when the pond was dug out. But we do our best. It will be very much an ongoing project. It won't be finished this year. And it's the way of gardens, certainly the gardens I've been associated with, it'll be probably never finished. That's all part of the pleasure. So, this is the peaceful part of the garden. I'd like to share now with you just a little bit of the rather enjoyable time I spent this afternoon in Hungerford. Friends, I'm beside myself with excitement. This is the first time I have left home for any form of recreation for nine weeks and I'm in the lovely little town of Hungerford where I'm going to meet a friend in the churchyard 
and we're going to wave to each other from opposite ends of a seat. So come along with me and I'll see if we can find something interesting to look at. door of the Church of St Lawrence in Hungerford. All closed up at the moment. Very difficult for a lot of people to not be able to communicate and congregate together for worship but the congregation and the pastor of this community have certainly found ways around it. That's the simple pleasure of hearing other people's voices. Taking a stroll it's something we haven't experienced for weeks and weeks and it's almost overwhelming. I'm just going to let you listen to the bird song in the churchyard. See who passes by. nest in the church. They apparently come every year. Nice sunny spot to be. A bee. Just want to show everybody what the lovely Kennet and Avon Canal looks like. Not exactly on my doorstep but within 20 minutes drive. I'm very very fortunate. pleasures of looking up the canal. I'm actually thinking about the people living on the boats. They've been locked down for eight weeks but they've been surrounded by the wildlife as well. So let's hope it's given them as much solace as it seems to have given many others of us. So finally, friends, I just want to reflect on some of the things I noticed on my exciting first day out. And I put them in the form of a list of 10 things I noticed. Um, first of all, the th first thing that really cropped up was just noticing people's voices. Uh, that particular sound of human voice in the open air, chatting and laughing, and it made me feel surprisingly emotional. Secondly, the landscape on the drive to Hungerford. I'm so familiar with it, but it looked completely new and strange. And I noticed how much it had changed during the last two months. The gates were closed on the entrances to a number of houses. People that usually leave their gates open had closed them. And I must admit, we have done as well. I felt very moved and actually almost tearful at the sight of people just queuing, standing two metres apart, waiting to visit the corner shop in Kintbury. I just noticed them and felt what dear, good, ordinary people they are trying to go about their lives and just do the right thing. I've noticed that strangers are talking to each other so much more 
while I was sitting in the churchyard waiting for my friend, I chatted to passers-by and passers-by chatted to me, but very much more than they usually do and much more open and friendly, even though at a distance of two metres. <laughs> Again, it was surprisingly disconcerting to see all the church doors that I passed, which are always open, closed up, and unprecedented notices nailed to the doors, assuring the congregations that church is more than just a building, and giving details of how they could keep in touch. And I thought that praise be for the internet must have been on many of their lips for being able to partake in online worship. Now, since we're now allowed to visit garden centres, while I was coming home I called into one and I was wearing a mask but I still felt really anxious and claustrophobic with the feeling in my mind of, you know, do I need to be here? Now, me in a garden centre asking that question? It's indeed a very strange and unprecedented time if I question my presence in such a place. In the villages, there's still very much what I call the Sunday streets atmosphere in the middle of the week, and it took me back to remind me of my childhood, but also, sadly, as the lockdown eases around Autumn Cottage, that blissful peace which called to mind the 1950s, which we did enjoy here for several weeks, is now slipping, with helicopters returning overhead and large pieces of farm machinery really thundering up and down the road once more. But the tenth observation that I have on my list is, oh well, it was bliss while it lasted, but here at the bottom of the garden, the bird song and the thundering of horses' hooves frolicking round in the paddock next to us are still the loudest things that I hear, and that suits me just fine. So now tell me, friends, and record in your journals, if you'd like to, what are the things that you have noticed if you've started venturing out once again? I'll leave you now to your thoughts and your notebooks, but as always, if you've enjoyed this video, do please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribe if you think you'd like to see more of life here at Autumn Cottage, and now, excitingly, there's the promise of perhaps going out even further afield. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you all again very soon.